race the green flag for 200 laps, 500 miles to start the 2024 season. Green flag, the Daytona 500 is underway. What's up, y'all? The 2024 NASCAR Cup season is nine races in, and that means it's a good time to make a first quarter report card for all the teams. Some of these grades will have relativity to the expectations of the particular team, but also some teams will have separate grades mentioned due to one or two drivers carrying their team or letting them down. To start off with, we'll get to the two powerhouses taken care of from the start and tied together. Sellier. Will he ride with him? Will he try to grab those 10 points well, and the stage ticket for himself? We see Ross Chastain coming to the back bumper. Going to see a push. Going to see momentum. Watch his five going to the outside of Chase Elliott. That's what it took. Now Big Chastain by Chase. I think the wind goes to Chase Elliott. Fantastic. As the season has completed its first quarter, Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing are in their own zip codes. They both will receive the only A-pluses of all the teams. These two organizations combine for eight of the nine wins, and the top six positions in the point standings. Hendrick has had the incredible storylines, and Joe Gibbs has managed to maintain their own prowess. William Byron and Denny Hamlin are the only multi-time winners in the series this season. Byron's three wins are joined by Larson and Chase Elliott's wins for the five wins by Hendrick Motorsports. Kyle Larson's three poles gives Hendrick four poles, while JGR only has Denny Hamlin's pole. But in general, all Hendrick and Gibbs cars are fast every week, getting the most stage points and winning all the races. Hendrick has six stage wins, but JGR actually has one more, with seven. Here's where the two teams' drivers rank in points and their place in average finish in the series. Also, a few more stats that simply show Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing could end this season having completely dominated every statistical category there will be. Where does he block? Does he block high? Does he block yep. low? Here it comes. Kyle Busch to the middle. Shooting a gap. No help with Kyle Busch. Oh, Suarez right alongside him. Three wide. All Look at this. Four. Here they come to the flag. Three abreast. Photo finish. How about, I think it's Blaney. Unbelievable. As seen. Next up, we'll talk about the organization with the lone win, not by the prior two teams. Trackhouse Racing provided another viral moment. The Atlanta win means that Suarez is already locked into the playoffs. And Chastain has a speed and should find a win himself. Give the team both full-time cars with playoff spots. While the grade could be argued downward, Suarez does have the Atlanta win and Chastain will continue to compete up front. Trackhouse earns an A-. And here's a few statistics to go for the team. Next up we have 2311 Racing, which gets an F. Just kidding, about the teams. Because the 2311 pit crews seriously do get an F. If you had to grade the whole team as a whole, you couldn't give them any A because of how bad the pit crews have been. They've been costing this team for years now. But Tyler Reddick continues to have speed. Bubba Wallace has continued to solid runs from last year's playoff appearance. The 23 and 45 cars sit 8th and 9th in the standings. So through the first quarter, considering the ups and downs the teams have faced, it's been a great start, and they've earned an A- minus so far. And while the grade is same as Trackhouse, this can circle back to, I would have more faith in the, in the one of Chastain to make a deeper run than the trust that the 2311 pit crews could allow Bubba or Reddick to maintain their 5th to 10th place speed or keep their chances at wins when they have those opportunities. Now for a twin bill. Two grades for Penske and Wood Brothers, as technically the Wood Brothers 21 car is another team, but it's a fourth Penske car, and honestly grading them is near impossible, as the 2, 12, 22, and then the 21 cars have performed at four completely different grades, the best being Blaney's 12 team, as he's been the fastest Ford over the last three to four years. After a rough few finishes behind the 2024 season, the 22 team has worked their way back into the playoffs. But the extreme disappointment of near last place running Harrison Burton and mid-pack at best Austin Sendrick is just unacceptable for this team. 
Some goods are that actually three of the nine poles have been Penske. And other than Hendrick or Gibbs, they are the only team with multiple stage wins. Albeit just two. But some stats continue to show that Penske hasn't provided the results of being top tier, but it hasn't been bottom tier either. Here's the standings and top fives and tens for the team. So with Cendric and Logano's recovering, but lesser performance bringing down the team grade, Penske gets a C+. Plus. If we ignored the 21 and the struggle of the rest of Ford, they'd get a B-. minus. The 21 gets an F. Wood Brothers the, can't be running last essentially nearly every week, which if you look at the standings, that's basically where they're at. Harrison has struggled mightily. Matt DiBenedetto kept that 21 car in playoff contention or made the playoffs. Burton has been atrocious in the fourth Penske car, the definition of failure. Now, possibly the most interesting team moving forward. Stuart Haas Racing could be treated two ways. If you treated them how they would have had expectations just a few years ago, they'd get a D+. But as of late... Considering Briscoe has worked back into a playoff spot, and the other cars seem capable of making improvements to be in condition for the playoff bubble, I'm giving SHR a B-. The 1041 would look a little better without the point penalties, but each car in the organization has had blips of better running this season. A team that's settled back some, Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing is 13th and 18th in the playoff standings. That's a definite step back from last year. And so far, no stage wins. But the team hasn't been a fast starter, but they haven't started as well as they did last year. But they are on the cusp of either falling well short of expectations or settling right into or right at where they set the bar preseason. RFK gets a B-. minus, As mentioned by Brad and others, they don't have the speed they need but they've gotten some finishes to earn not being discredited. And another Ford team that's sorely wishing they took advantage of the first two weeks of the season. Front row could have positioned themselves as a talking point team. They won the pole at Atlanta. Both cars have led laps. The 38 has had good or even great runs. But after not taking advantage of the first two weeks when the team needed to have, they sit 23rd and 25th in the standings, which is fine but they don't have the power to go on a run and drive back into the playoffs on points. For the team just missing out on some opportunity and not improving as much as they would have liked, I'm giving them a C+. I'll admit it's harsh, but they got it an extra credit packet that they just left laying around. The last Ford team I would say we've actually all been shocked by. Rick Ware Racing used to be a laughing stock for everyone. Well, they definitely aren't by their performance anymore. Based on where they were, they would get an A+. But it's been a process. And while looking at some stats and the standings even, you could say, man, you're crazy. They're still bad. But in this competitive top-to-bottom day and age, the fact Justin Haley has ran better, he's had more real speed is what's the difference maker. The Coda DQ for the weight minimum weight penalty throws some stats and the standings off some. But I'm giving Rick Ware Racing a true grade of C+, but a weighted grade for that team a B-. Now, for reverse cars racing, well, that's just Kyle, but RCR is a conundrum. Before Texas, I was ready to split the three and the eight but Kyle was still in the playoff, and Austin Dillon was 31st in the standings. But because of other performances, even though this past week we actually saw both RCR cars get top 10 finishes, so could they go on a tear or just start performing better? But both cars are now out of the playoffs, as Kyle is tied with Logano as the first car out. But we're still talking about Kyle Busch, and Austin Dillon and an RCR car could easily Go in Talladega this Sunday. But as of this moment, I'm giving RCR a grade of C+. The ever-growing and expanding team of the sport, Spire Motorsports, has been interesting. I think they've had a little more speed than some would think, but they've had some bad luck. 
This year they've had some really tough luck in the third car of Zane Smith. But I'm not, I'm not grading his finishes. But his speed, which I think hovers overall around that 25th position, which is completely acceptable for a third Spire entry. Carson Hosevar has given flashes, which we think everyone would have expected, good and bad. I think if some mechanical issues and some pit issues between the 7 and 77 were to be cleaned up, they'd probably be in the 18th to 22 points in the standings by season's end. Rose-colored glasses, and maybe because of how successful their truck team has been, I'm willing to give them, I'm giving them a B-. minus. Now a team I don't have much positive feelings for is Colleg Racing. I hate that this team that a few years ago was this developing, trophy hunting, and fun team that's just become not good. Their cup and Xfinity programs have suffered, and I don't think they've gotten as good drivers and teams as they would have had a few years ago. Maybe 10 years ago, they'd have been able to run 20th to 23rd, but right now, with how competitive the field is, they're 30th to 34th, really, week to week. Colleg Racing gets a grade of a D. After last season's much improved performance of JTG Darty Racing's Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s full season, even apart from the Daytona 500, this season has not been a continuation of that. Jordan Bianchi has mentioned many times that J- JTG, JTG is not a low-funded type team. So I'm not going to look at them as, well, it's just a small single-car team that's just getting by. So I'm giving the 47 car a D as well. There just really hasn't been much positive runs or good speed to reflect on the team. So their back-of-the-pack finishes and running will be what their resume will be for that grade. On to our final team to grade, Legacy Motor Club. After a miserable 2023, the team was bound to have an improved year this season. And I know John Hunter Nemechek actually had been in the playoffs to start the season, carrying a good speed weeks in Atlanta. But I actually overlooked that the 42 and the 43 are 19th and 20th currently in the standings. While there is a separation ahead of them to essentially the bubble spot, but this is way better than last year, and both full-time cars have looked better so far. While being mid-pack isn't an achievement to some teams, it's a great starting point for Legacy to have a great season. What feels like the most popular grade I've given, our final grade will be another B-. While each team after Hendrick and Gibbs can be argued up or down for the most part, let me know if you think I missed the mark badly on any teams, or if you think I was spot on on most of them. I'll take the compliment. Thanks for watching, everybody.